Whether it's your very first car or a replacement to an old yet trusted runabout, the Toyota Wego has always been a popular choice amongst consumers because of its affordability and surprising practicality. But it goes without saying that the Wego has had its fair share of flaws. Now, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the all new 2024 Toyota Wego. And what we want to find out here today is does an all-new platform really mean an all-new experience? Or is it pretty much more of the same? <laughs> the all-new Toyota Wego GCVT variant, which by the way is the top of the line, just get my phone here and open the app, comes in at Yep, 729,000 Philippine pesos, which is still quite affordable despite the slight increase. And if you check autodeal.com.ph or our app, you'll see that there are ongoing promos on the Toyota Wego. Whether it's the Wego or any other car of your choice, you can get quotes and compare them from our official dealer partners nationwide within minutes to ensure you get the best deal. Fun fact. If you were to use our Comparo tool on our website, get the top of the line Brio, Wego, and Celerio, you'll find that the Wego is still the most affordable, even with the price increase. Now for that price, what exactly do you get? Well, let me show you. Underneath is a one liter, three cylinder gasoline engine, naturally aspirated of course, because I don't think you can fit a turbo anywhere in there, that produces a gobsmacking 66 horses and 89 newton meters of torque mated to an updated CVT. Now, there may be quite a lot of you laughing right now at how tiny this engine is, but understand that the car also isn't all that big or all that heavy. And I'll have you know that on the highway, after a lengthy drive on NLEX, we were able to get 29 kilometers per liter. Driving, of course, at 80 kilometers per hour. But still, under normal conditions, you're doing about 24, which is still darn good. And then inside the city, during hell traffic, 10 kilometers per liter. That's still pretty darn respectable. Before you head down to the comments and start saying that this engine here would have been better suited on something with two wheels, we've got you covered because we do that too. We review motorcycles on MotoDeal. The links down below are to our MotoDeal YouTube channel where we do basically what we're doing here except on two wheels with less hair. It's now adopted a more aggressive look but somehow remains quite cute. Kind of like, kind of like a Pomeranian snarling. Despite its price, it still has a full set of LEDs for its headlamps and DRLs. It's uh, larger than its previous generation thanks to the new platform it shares with the Rays. And between the Celerio and Brio, it has the longest wheelbase at 2,525 millimeters. Down the side, you've got repeaters on the side mirror, 14 inch wheels wrapped in 65 series tires, discs brake up front, drum at the rear, and 160 millimeters of ground clearance. At the rear, you have this tiny yet cute spoiler, same with your third brake light, wiper here at the back, and it's, it's much broader than I thought it would be. It's flat, it's wide, it adds girth to the vehicle. When you open the fifth door, it will reveal what we're eyeballing as about 200 liters of space. We don't have exact specifications, but to show you, this is your standard backpack, and yeah, that's basically how big, large it is. Now, when you need more space, the second row does fold over, tumble over rather, but it's not a 60-40 split. It's actually a bench that folds down completely. Another hassle also is that it doesn't fold flat. So when you're holding heavier items and you gotta bring it in, that will sort of like have to, you have to lift it up. That might hurt your back a little bit. The good thing is, is that the opening is so large that you can definitely fit more than just two balik bayan boxes in there. That's quite nice. There are not a lot of toys here at the rear seats. When I say not a lot, I mean close to none, actually. This is Jack's bottle, and trust me, it fits nowhere inside this car. Not in the center armrest, which it doesn't have. Not in the bottle holders on the door, which it can't fit, because those are probably better off for the tinier bottles that you have uh, that are about 
300, 250 ml. That's about it. What it does have a lot of is space. This is Jack's actual driving position. And look at the amount of legroom that I still have behind him. The headroom is somewhat similar in space to the legroom, which is generous enough considering how tiny the car is. Now this is achieved because the rear seats are very elevated, which allows you to almost have a 90 degree bend, or 45 in my case, because 45 plus 45 is equals to 90. Shut up. I, I tried, sorry. Now, what it's like for Jack to sit behind himself, it is most definitely a very tight squeeze. And it's also a tight squeeze if you decide to try and fit three people here at the rear. But if in a pinch you really do need to move three people, then yeah, it's possible. Except the guy in the middle just won't be very happy. Now, up front, I'll get myself out of the ogre driving position. Up front where it's, the functions are pretty much the same, I would say that it most definitely looks much better than the previous one. Yes, it's still a lot of plastic, but it's got more textures, it's got more angles, and overall, it just looks so much better inside this 2024 model than the previous models. It just looks better, and it makes me feel better when you're driving something that looks so darn good. What doesn't feel so great are the materials of the seats. They are more rugged, more rough, more durable. You know that they'll last for quite some time. I just wish they were a little bit softer, really, and I'm in short, so I know what it is that I'm talking about. Um, you've got analog uh, gauges here with a small digital chip computer on the right-hand side. You have buttons on your steering wheel, albeit just a few. You have an infotainment system that has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and a reverse camera as well. Underneath that are your air controls which are digital and then of course a 12 volt socket with two rather small bottle holders there and then a lot more cubby spaces found here beside the parking handbrake. And standard on the top of the line G variant is a dash cam with Toyota branding too that comes with every single automobile. Now you will notice that there is no cruise control function inside this car which would have been great really but it just goes to show that this car really is truly built for the city. You can take it out on the highway, which we did, which is how we got our highway figures, but it's really better off inside the city, which we're going to do right now. Uh, before we do set on this drive, do please consider subscribing to our channel and liking this video because we create all of this stuff just for you guys. You know, Jack and I were just talking right now that this is essentially a new car. It's not just a facelift. And with the new car, uh, new platform, I was hoping that the driving experience would be somewhat different. But to be honest, it's actually quite the same. The NVH is pretty much similar to the previous generation where noise starts to creep in. And I'm not saying that it creeps in at 100 kilometers per hour. No, much less than that. At 60 kilometers per hour, you're already starting to hear some of the, well, for me, the familiar noises that we heard on the previous Wego. Um, I'll tell you though, in general, the noise may be coming in, but it feels like it's padded in such a manner that it's not so tin cannish. No, the noise does still come in, but it feels like it's starting to soften inside the cabin itself. Also, now that we're at the complete stop, I am in drive and the brakes are fully applied. If you've driven the previous Wego or you know anything about the previous Wego, it's the same here that there's vibration coming from the engine. It is a three cylinder. So the vibration still comes in uh, ever so slightly when you're at stop and also when you're driving at slower speeds, you will feel some not, it's not a hesitation. It's a vibration that, that is, like I said, it's coming from the engine that it's not unsettling. It's just you understand two things. Number one is that it's a small displacement three-cylinder engine and the fact that this is an extremely affordable car. So there are some compromises that you're going to have to uh, get used to. Also, we noticed that while you're driving in traffic, say you're crawling um, at, at 30 or 40 kilometers per hour, which predominantly is what you're going to be doing inside the city anyway when you're stuck in traffic. Or even less. Or even less, you're right. But when you do start speeding up past 50, hitting 60 kilometers per hour, there is a noise that you hear. 
it's not a deafening noise by any means, but it's something that you will have to get used to because what Jack and I figured that it's the transmission. There's a High pitch. It's a well, to, to, sound. It's like that. Mm, it's yeah. something like that, and it is coming from the transmission itself. So that is made more apparent when Jack and I were on the highway. So the faster you go, the louder it does get. It isn't a banshee in your ear. No, not at all. It's probably quieter than Jack's phone that just beeped right now. But it's something that you will eventually notice. The good thing is that the system itself has a great stereo system. Sorry, a good stereo system, not a great stereo system that obviously with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connects to your mobile phone and you can drown anything out, including jack snoring. And that says something about the system of this car. You know, another thing that I noticed and not liking to a lot of people is the steering wheel of this car, although quite tiny, is heavy. I liken it even to my Montero. It's close to being that heavy. To others, people might think that they want a lighter steering because it's just a smaller automobile. And sure, I get that. But for me, a heavier steering just makes me feel like I'm more connected to the road. It's already a small car, so give me a little something back. And, and it is. That's what I like back. That heavy feeling. The power isn't going to ever, ever knock you off your feet, uh, whether you're alone inside the car or you're two people inside. Um, it's, 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 it is as expected. It is only a one liter engine uh, and less than 100 horses, less than 100 newton meters of torque. But I will say that the updated CVT isn't as lethargic as you would expect. No, the delivery of, or rather the transfer of power from the engine onto the wheels is actually quite good. Uh, there is a lot of noise, as you would expect from a CVT, but it engages it pretty well. I think the best part about the update of this car would be really the interior. The cabin that you're in, your, your, your materials, your seat, um, just the way that it looks. It doesn't look like this thing was passed on and said, oh, ikaw na gumawa niyan, oh, ikaw na gumawa niyan. Like nobody wanted it. No, it was thought about. It doesn't feel like there, these are spare parts of some other car that wasn't wanted and they put it together. No, as with the previous ones where even the, the, the stick of the way, way, way previous Wigos, you'd, it would just be bare. Here, there's cloth that surrounds it. You know, there's thought in the dash. Like I, like I mentioned, there's angles, there's um, textures. Even the door panels have different type of textures on it. So it really feels like you got yourself an automobile, not, not a budget automobile. Well, yes, it's still a budget automobile because of the power. But I tell you what's not budget, the fuel efficiency of this car, because as we mentioned, in the high, on the highway rather, it's capable of doing up to 29 kilometers per liter. But realistically, <laughs> it's more like 24. But we did hit 29. And in the city, 10 kilometers per liter? Hey man, that isn't bad at all. In hell traffic, woo! Yes. Try property car. Although the driving experience is pretty similar to the previous generation Wego, all the updates around the car are really a good step from where it was before. You've got better and spacious interior, fuel economy is awesome, and then best of all, it's price. Now, while all its other rivals have had a price increase and inflation really being a female Pomeranian, the Wego's price point has remained largely unchanged. And dare I say, Amongst all the small hatchbacks out there, I think the Wego has the best value.